Um, well, thank you for having me, for starters. Um, thanks for the lovely intro, especially the bit that I know a lot of people. Um, it's kind of an ongo ongoing joke in the household that my kids say I can go anywhere in North Wales and I'll know someone, which is probably a bit about, yeah, which is probably a really good description of, of me. And, and as Susan said, yeah, I'm, I'm quite local, um, born in Bangor, lived in Shavach, and I'm now in Mochtra, a bit close to Conway, the Common Bay area. But yes, I am the membership I'm actually just changed my job role now. So my job title is just membership manager, which makes it a little bit easier. But in my actual role for the trust, so I joined the trust in 2019. So I'll be up to six years with the trust this this um, this um, year coming. Um, but I've been involved in, well, I'm mainly involved in, in trying to recruit new members and supporters for the trust. Because as a charity, obviously, we we need to make money to survive and to, to do the work we do. Um I'm also involved with um, running a lot of events because being out and about and talking to people is is one of the fundamental things that the Wildlife Trust does and needs to do to to get people involved with, and you know protected nature and things like that. Um, and also, inadvertently, I got involved with the Brennig Osprey project back in 2019, Sorry. which is what this talk tonight will be about. So you know, I'm, I am involved in the day to day running of the Osprey project, but more from afar rather than on the ground every single day. But I'll give you a bit of a brief history from the start to where we're at now. Um, and as Susan said, it's it's had some 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 major ups and downs up at, at Kim Brenny, um, literally downs as we'll as we'll go on today. But um we, we're kind of in a really good place now. But I'll I'll go through the talk a bit. So anyway, just a kind of a reminder. So I'm employed by the North Wales Wildlife Trust. I'm a full time member of staff um and the north wales wildlife trust is part of the 46 wildlife trusts that cover the uk and between us all across the uk we look after 2300 plus nature reserves of which 36 are across north wales well actually it's 35 plus another one but i won't steal what will chris wins thunder from his talk when he will be telling you about the future of our nature reserves. So there's some quite exciting news coming in that talk. Um, so our kind of our overall strategy, what we're working towards is, is, is uh, our 30 by 30 strategy. So that, that this is the kind of fundamental thing the trust is trying to do. And that's what we're trying to do is get 30% of land and sea protected for nature by the year 2030, because we are in a um, climate emergency, which we all know. Um, things are quite challenging for nature. So, you know, we, we manage our 36 nature reserves, but they don't work in isolation. So a lot of the work we do these days is also trying to join up the dots between those reserves and talk with other landowners, just again, to get more um, of the land and the sea protected for wildlife. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, my throat is a little bit croaky because I spent all day at Bangor University today chatting to <laughs> all the students. They had their open day today and it was absolutely rammed which was absolutely amazing to see i think we got about 200 300 people who wanted just to join our maiden list and probably another 100 of them wanted to volunteer and come out with us on the reserve and things so it was absolutely fantastic so again it's just um that's kind of what my job is it's joining up those dots and trying to just get people involved with with the wildlife trust and you know um, nature conservation in 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 general so uh, um yeah, and the other thing we do is is we run over 150 events a year across North Wales, and that's no mean feat. It takes an awful lot of staff time and volunteer time. Like um, there's a few people on the talk tonight, Suzanne, Su um, Sue, Kate Gibbs and things. They've all helped us run events in the past, so it's absolutely fantastic. So going on to our talk tonight, the Brenning Osprey Project. So I got involved with the Brenning Osprey Project back in 2019 when I joined uh, the Trust. So as Sue said, um, it, it, it was kind of formed before that, um, really, um, about 2013. And that was when the first Ospreys were seen up at Kim Brennick. Um, so, but we'll go on to that in a minute. So just very quickly, we'll have a kind of a whistle stop thing about Ospreys. So obviously the the, the UK Osprey, or known in Welsh as the Gwelch of Puscod. So, so this is a generic slide because we do a lot of talks out and about about ospreys we do go and see kids we go and see uh, different groups across north wales so there's a couple of slides i pinched from one of the other other people who do the osprey talk so this is a quick intro for ospreys again just kind of a reintroduction what they are so 
um, some of the different names for them across the world. So we've got the Moor area or Sea Eagle or Errol the Moor, Eagle of the Sea, uh, Gwalch Awegi or Seahawk, Water Eagle. So there's lots of different names, but obviously we know them as the, the, the Osprey, UK Osprey. So how big are they? So they are, their body is 60 centimetre tall, so about two foot tall. And they have a white head with a distinctive brown eye strap. Um, they are generally white below and a darker brown from above. Um, and females usually have a brownish patch on their chest, so that, you, know, you can tell them apart by, by looking for these, these, these markings. Um, adult birds have yellow eye, whilst the eyes of the juveniles are orange, so it changes as they get older. And the wingspan of an adult osprey is about five foot, um, and they have a hook beak for tearing its prey, and its only prey is fish. So, And they can grab and fly off with fish from up to a metre under the water surface. Uh, and they are generally monogamous and, and pair for life. So some of the os up to other up to, no, to adaptations that ospreys have from other kind of birds of prey. So they have a clear eyelid called the nick the nictitating membrane. Yeah. They have specialized inten intestines which with very, very strong enzymes. So when they eat what they eat with the fish, they literally don't leave anything to the the whole lot. So when they catch the fish, they will eat everything. And we sometimes we'll find a little bit of the uh, the fin, or not the fin, sorry, the, um, oh, the it's a, a pericurculum is the proper name. So we find them in the nest because they can't digest them. And sometimes we'll get some pike teeth, which they can't digest. But literally they will eat the whole rest of the fish, the whole thing. Um the osprey's nostril is long and slit-like, so then they can close up when they dive down through in the water. Um, and they have white legs and feet. Um, they have an oil gland as well to preen, and they're waterproof and, and have anti-parasitic functions. Scaly feet with sharp spicules. And ospreys can reverse their outer toe when they hold a fish, so they can actually move it round and round. Um they only have two points, so they can have two point toes pointing forward and two back. So then when they grab their fish, they can rotate it and move it when they're carrying it through the air. And also it's great for, for when they're actually catching their fish. Um, and the talons are perfectly round. And they have um, reticulate legs, so scaly. And all four of its toes are the same length. So this is um, just a picture we want to show you how amazing those, those claws are. So um, Gary Jones is a wildlife photographer we do a lot of work with. He lives um, lives in northeast Wales and he does a lot of work for the Brenny Gospel Project and he allows us to use a lot of his work uh, uh, without any charge as long as we credit him. So, But that's just an amazing picture of one of the ospreys uh, coming into fish. So they kind of fish in two different ways. They can either, like this osprey, is just going to dive straight into the water and pick up the fish and come and, and come out of the water. And they also do what's called the dry method where they'll hover, well not hover, but they'll scoot across the top of the surface and literally just grab one. And just blow and pull it out and then they can carry them up to well we've seen ospreys bringing back fish from 10 miles away from where they've been caught so they'll they'll they'll, they'll fish in the um commie estuary take it all the way back up to Chimbrenic. so it's, it's it's spectacular to see it's one of the nicest things about working at Chimbrenic is you actually get to see this happening which which is fabulous so where is Chimbrenic? so this is an old map of our nature reserves it's, you can tell it's an old map because it's got our really old logo natty wildlife trust their logo on the on the left hand side but that's all our nature reserves so anyone who doesn't know where Chimbrenig is if you can see where Betters and Coyd is in the middle of that map number 23 that's roughly where Brennig is a lot of people ask me where's Chimbrenig you know if they've never been and I literally say do you think where all the major roads are Chimbrenig is the furthest part from all of them in the middle <laughs> so um yeah it's it's up on the Denby Moors um it's about 400 meters above sea level um it gets extremely windy up there um but it's it can be absolutely beautiful I always forget in the summer the temperature difference so i live down in conway and i'll stick my shorts on in the morning in the sun and i'll get up there and it can always be five ten degrees sometimes colder up there and i spend the day shivering then because i'm not prepared so kind of the, the histories of ospreys at brennig like I, I kind of alluded to earlier brennig's been quite a difficult place for ospreys so ospreys originally were seen around brennig in 2013 um Welsh Water did the initial work then. So the Welsh Water spoke to us um, and they were like, well, actually, we've got ospreys in the area. Can we, where's the best place to put these? So, so where's the best place to put the nest? So they spoke to us 
Um, I think a lot of you will know a gentleman who works for us called Jonathan Hulson um, and Adrian Lloyd Jones. So they and, and Chris Wynn were kind of involved in conversations with with Kim Brennig. So Wells Water started the whole project off completely themselves. They put five nests up around Brennig uh, in different areas. Um, can you see my mouse on the screen? Can you see that? So yeah. one of the reasons we're involved in uh, Kim Brennig is we own this land here, which is Gorse Mine Hewitt. So this was our biggest nature reserve. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave the word was in there because like I said, Chris Wynn will have some updates when he does his talk. So Gorse Mine Hewitt is our biggest nature reserve. The red dot in the middle is where the current osprey nest is. There's a couple of other nests around. So there's another nest not far from the island just below that. There's another nest on the left-hand side in the wooded area and two on the right-hand side. So that was the initial um, five nests which were put up when the project first started. Um, and then the first ospreys chose the nest with the red dot. And we're not 100% we're not sure why they chose that nest, but it's it it seems to be in the spot which has kind of got really good lines of sight. It's also the only nest up there which is actually has its pole in the water. So maybe they felt like that was... a it was much safer than some of the other nests. So that was the one they chose. Welsh Water did all the initial work. The original nests were actually built when they redeveloped their visitor centre up there. So they reclaimed all the wood and, and they did all that. Um, and then as things kind of progressed further along the line, the North Wales Wildlife Trust got involved and also the RSPB got involved for, 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 for a time as well. Um, but our main involvement came from having this big nature reserve just behind the nest and then below at the sites of Brenny you've got our viewing point and then the visitor centre so if anyone's been to, to Brenny you'll know where they are so it's about a kilometre from our viewing point to the Brenny nest there's also a bird hide um, in this area as well which you can book and go and see the ospreys close up which is which is a lovely it's about 140 metres away so it's absolutely fantastic so yeah so five nests were erected around Tim Brenny by Welsh Water and we we advised at that time so um, the first bird to come up to Brennig was an osprey called Jimmy. Um, he was, his, his ring number was CU2. So Jimmy um, originally was hanging around the Glaslin nests down near, um, not far from Port Maddog. And he actually, if anyone follows ospreys, uh, a lot of you will have heard of one, uh, quite a famous osprey at Glaslin called Mrs. G. So Jimmy actually mated a few times with Mrs. G, but was um, displaced by another another male. And then eventually he um, moved over to Brennig and um, he stayed around the Brennig, well, stayed around Brennig for a while and, and things like that. So this was just before the, uh, kind of the formation of the project was because Jimmy was in the area. Unfortunately, Jimmy didn't really have a great, ending so jimmy died because he landed on a an electricity pylon on a transformer which electrocuted him poor thing um but there's a lovely website called operation jimmy if anyone wants to google it which tells you the full story and exactly what happened and things at glasgow and it was lovely lovely to see it was just a really really sad ending and that kind of were kind of laid what the brennig osprey project was kind of a bit like for a while it was it was quite a difficult project to kind of establish and get things going and there was quite a lot of issues going on at Brennig which um some are unforeseen but some of it yeah well I'll go to the talk and we can you can make your own minds up at that so after that so Jimmy died and then it took a few years before we got an, another Osprey pair coming to Brennig so in 2017 we got another uh, female Osprey called Blue 24 came so Blue 24 female osprey was born in 2010 she was a rutland bird but she was part of a clutch of translocated chicks whose parents had come with her in scotland so there's the um, tim mccrill and the roy dennis foundation did an awful lot of work of moving chicks around so I, you, know, you probably all know tim you've all things so i'm not going to go into that but they did a lot of work with translocation with kate and ospreys and a lot of the welsh Ness did very well out of these translocated ospreys. So some, some, a lot of these coming from Rutland. So Blue 24 was from Rutland. So obviously she, she fledged, she went, she migrated to, to Africa and then came in back. So, um, so she first came back in 2012 when she was a re two years after she was born. Um, and she came to Wales and started looking for nests. And she actually 
found a nest in, um, near, well, in, at the Dovey Osprey site. So she found a nest where, where the Dovey Osprey site run by Montgomery Wildlife Trust was. Um, and it was, wasn't was the Dovey nest you can find on the webcam. There was a private nest not far back, far far behind the visits on the other side of the valley. And she used that nest. Now, unfortunately, again, like I said, with this story of Brennan, you see it's not, not plain sailing. Blue 24 spent two years unsuccessfully trying to um, rear young. So basically what happened there was there was two nests at the Dovey site, one on the Dovey uh, Wildlife Trust site, which you can see on the camera, and her private nest, which was a bit further away but there was only a single male between the two females. Um, and that male was another quite um, prominent male, if you're into Osprey things, a, 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 an Osprey called Monty, which a lot of people had heard of. So Monty was having his way with two females for a couple of years at the Dovey site. And when push came to shove, he would always pick the other nest. Because we think it was because it was closer to the estuary, it was easier to, to provide for. And then Blue 24's nest would fail every year. So this failed for two years. And then Montgomery Wildlife Trust and, and NRW um, came up with a plan to how can we make this nest more successful. And at the time, well, well, the Osprey numbers have been getting better every single year in Wales, but they weren't great at this point. So the decision, it was a quite a tough decision, was that actually we're going to block this nest off and force Blue 24 to go elsewhere to try and find another male. Uh, and they did that. And then in 2017, she found a way to Clembrenig. There was an empty nest there. She liked the nest. And on the back of that, she found a new mate. And this was a bird called HR7. Um, and HR7 was a little bit younger than her. So he, HR7 on the left there was born in 2014. And he was a Scottish bird. So he came from Lake Menteith in Scotland. Um, we don't know who his parents are. It was a, it was a, it was a private nest with a, where the parents weren't ringed, but he was. Um so they came, they 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 got bonded in 2017, and in 2018, uh, they managed to mate, they bred, um, they, they had a couple of eggs. So ospreys usually kind of lay between three, sometimes four eggs. These laid two eggs, um, but only one hatched. Um, and that's the chick on the right-hand side. So that chick, again, it's a Gary Jones picture, as you can see. That chick was called K K C K A five called Rolly, and and Rolly's a bit of a character. So um, no, sorry, take it back. So that's Rolly. But in twenty eighteen, sorry, they had one chick that fledged. That chick has never been seen since. It successfully fledged, but it's never seen been seen back in back in the UK. And in twenty nineteen was when Rolly was born. Um, Rolly was ringed, um, and Rolly has actually been seen back the last couple of years hanging around in the Glaslyn Bar. Valley. So he's come back, he's been to Africa and he's come back and he's looking for his own nest. Uh, but Rowley was a bit of a character. So when ospreys are ringed, so one of their defence mechanisms that ospreys do is they, they they play dead. And we've got an amazing picture in the osprey lookout of Kim Brenning. So when you're looking down on the nest, they, 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 they're they almost perfectly camouflaged and you can't tell. And it's what, how they do to hide from predators and things like that. But Rowley, when he was ringed, didn't play dead and he wasn't having it. So as you can see from these couple of pictures here, the ringer had to take him out the nest and take him to the bottom, onto the shore of the lakes to um, to, to ring him because he couldn't do it safely in the nest because Rowley was having a bit of a paddy. He was flapping his wings. He was he was biting the ring in his hand and all sorts. So Rowley was great. And you can see on the left-hand side picture there how grumpy he was looking. He wasn't very happy with the whole process whatsoever. And then the picture on the right, he, put, he stood up, put his wings out, and he started attacking the ringer again. So <laughs> I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Rolly because he was just such a bit of a character. And it's great now that he's back in Wales and he's been back for a few years now looking for his own mate and own nest. And um, Rolly's one of the success stories. So after that, so it was 2019, and then 2020 was COVID, wasn't it? So COVID was... Uh, oh, COVID was... was Difficult time for all of us, wasn't it, in different ways? And it was obviously it was difficult for, for us. Um, I think the Osprey probably liked it because it was nice and quiet up there. But in terms of work we were doing, obviously there was all the, the different aspects of not being able to travel, not going out and things like that. One really frustrating thing for us at this point was that Welsh Water, or well, Welsh Water shut in Brennick, obviously because you couldn't travel, which was no issue with that. But Wells Water decided to turn off all the webcams and the cameras so we couldn't watch the Ospreys, which we, at the time, 
weren't really happy with. We, I can understand that decision because they were scared that if they had showed off the Ospreys, it would encourage people to go up and see them for themselves. Yeah, I was of the opinion that, well, actually, we're all stuck at home. It would be great if we could leave the Osprey webcam on. But anyway, it was a bit of an issue, which is kind of one of the things that happens at Brennig sometimes when you've got different organisations working with different objectives. Right now, it's a million times better than it was, but it's taken us a while to get there. But during COVID, um, it was difficult. So <laughs> that picture on the left is my little girl, Cleo. So what we had to do during COVID is we had to drive to Gorse Mine Hewitt to monitor the Osprey to check everything was all right. And we had to walk a mile and a half to a viewing point to see the Ospreys. So I used to use it as an excuse to take my little ones up with me because they couldn't go to school. They were with me. So I used to stick a high vis on them and pretend we were all working. And I did get stopped by the police a couple of times asking what I was doing. But I told them exactly. I said, I work for the Wildlife Trust. We're monitoring the Ospreys and there was no issue. So, but the, the picture on the right, is my view so that was through a telescope from about 300 meters away and that was the only view of the nest we had during 2020 um because whilst water wouldn't open the site they wouldn't let us on and things like that so um but it wasn't all bad as you can see that was my viewpoint <laughs> it was quite quite nice and when you got it on a nice day like that it was absolutely amazing so you can just see there that the osprey nest is at the tip of those conifers um and it was you know it, it was fabulous i used to sit up there three, four hours with a scope, trying to take some videos, checking everything was all right. Absolutely no one around. It was, it was, it was brilliant. Um, and the Ospreys, again, they, they only laid two eggs. Again, like I said, three is the kind of normal number, but they only laid two again that year. Um, and they had one chick called Dwynwen. Um, and she did ledge but it wasn't so where are you I'll, I'll tell the story so they had a really nice quiet start of the year the osprey is no problem and you know, like i was spending lots of time going up and, and checking they were all right and they, we could see they had a chick obviously we well we think they had two eggs but it could have been three but because we couldn't see in the nest we didn't and so 100 percent no but we, they, we, we knew they definitely had one chick and that chick was all right so as the year progressed, there was a couple of other things that started to happen at there. So Welsh Water leased out a big patch of land at Kimbrenig to Channel 4 at the time. So Channel 4 were, and I, I think probably a, a lot of you will have heard this and know the story. Um, Channel 4 filmed a programme called The Bridge. Uh, and this filming took, took took place about half an hour, half a mile away from where the Osprey Nest was. Um, so there was a little bit concerned, was it going to cause disturbance and things like that? So um, we expressed we weren't exactly happy with it, but ultimately it was Wells Water's land. They, they'd done some scientific surveys and, and whatever they'd done to, to, to say, well, actually, we're happy with this to go ahead. So it went ahead. Um, so it went ahead. They did some filming up there. They, they cordoned off a whole area of land. Where where well where where Channel Four went in and did a lot of filming, um, and at the end of that filming, the ospreys abandoned their nest. So, but Blue Twenty Four and HR Seven and their chick abandoned the nest and moved to the other side of the lake um, for whatever reason. Now, it could be pure coincidence; it might not be. So. I'll just leave that kind of where it is, but it happened and I've not seen it happen on other sites for any reason, but it did at Brennig. So the, the birds moved to the far side of the lake away from where their nest was and literally abandoned it. Um, and unfortunately, because of that, Dwin, when their only chick that fledged, found herself a bit too close to one of the wind turbines and she was actually hit by a wind turbine and died. So the only chick from 2020 didn't survive um which was just a, you know, a really sad bit but there was a lot of discussions on the back of that we we we, we set up an action plan to make th sure things like that wouldn't happen again um and Wells water changed a lot of the way they thought about doing things because you know on the ground they're absolutely fantastic but with it being a Wells water reservoir some of the decisions around what happens there are not always done at a local level. And so, but there was an awful lot of change went on. There was an acknowledgement that things could have been done differently. Um, so we, and we hope to move on to a successful year. So on the back of that, in 2021, Blue 24 and HR7 
didn't come back from their migration at all. So again, it could be just coincidence. It, it could be whatever, whatever. But for some reason, those two birds who have been nesting at Brennig for the last three years didn't come back at all. Now the chances of one coming, you know, one bird not coming back are actually quite high. It's a long way when they migrate to the Western Sahara and come back. But the fact that it's both of them did is quite, it's a bit worrying. Um, and they've never been sighted anywhere else. They've never been seen anywhere else. They've just disappeared. So we don't know why or what, but they never came back. But we did um, get lucky. So in that spring, we got a new pair. So um, LM6 and LJ2 came. Um, so LM6 was a was a young bird from from again from Menti in Scotland. Would you believe the same place as where HL7 had been, um, born in 2018, and then LJ2 was another Scottish bird again, born in 2018 in in South Argyll. So and you can see them on the nest in um, March. 2021 in the snow so it was a bit cold at the start of that year and they, they arrived in the snow there and um, they successfully mated um, and they had a chick well so they laid an egg um, and this is when the Brenning obviously Brenning story took another sinister turn so this egg was laid on the last day of April and on the 1st of May we arrived to find that the, someone had gone up to Brenning and shot the nest down with a chainsaw in the middle of the night. Um, we think it was a, it was around about ten o'clock at night. It happened, and um, there was no one on site, and it was discovered. I don't know, we were doing a grouse survey um, up at Gorsman Showed that morning, and um, the Welsh Water staff had come in to find this, which which kind of started the longest weekend of my life after the first egg had been been laid. Um, so we don't know the full details of why anyone would do this. No one's ever been caught, but it was just really quite shocking and completely unexpected. Um, I think I've got a video. Yeah, see if this plays. Um, see if this is going to work. No, it doesn't want to play. So we had a video. So... One thing it did do uh, up at Brennig. Um, oh, is it going to play? Yeah, it might play. There we go. It still sends kind of goosebumps down me seeing that. It was, um, yeah. So they'd laid the eggs the day before. And then that happened in the night. It was just really, really, just really sad. It made us all really angry. And, you know, so many emotions kind of went through that. So, yeah, like I said, that started off one of the, the, the longest weekends of my life. So myself and Johnny Holson and, and the lady called Sarah Ellis, who um, runs our tree nursery in our mould office for the Wildlife Trust, the three of us actually built a new nest over the weekend for them. Um, and then we hastily erected a this new little nest on top of a of a, a, a shortened down pole as best we could to try and get something for the ospreys there as quickly as can but the ospreys didn't take to it uh, for for whatever reason they didn't like it um and they stayed in the in the area they didn't go anywhere for that whole year they were still around but obviously their nest had gone um but we did end up with some geese so we had goose camp for a while <laughs> and we got to see the chicks from the geese hatch which was really nice and then watch all them jump down into the lake so it was it was lovely watching that but it, as much as it was traumatic for us and really horrible and all the work we had to do on the back of this um there were actually some positives that came from it so it got so much pr promotion we were um francis our chief executive was on bbc breakfast talk about it we were on s4c it was in all the papers he got something like five million social media hits over over a few days it was absolutely crazy chris packham organized the fundraiser a few other people organized the fundraiser and it actually really put the branding nest on the on the map but also it, it literally changed the direction of the project completely in in terms of of what we realized that needed to, to happen for protection what what still are the dangers uh, and things like that but 
ultimately, you know, ospreys in the wild, they would have nests fail sometimes, you know, they, you know, some of the some of the big nests up in Scotland on, on the crowns of on the tree crowns and things like that, you know, in bad weather, they would fail. So obviously it, it looked like the Ospreys were probably less bothered by the whole experience than actually we were. And like I said, they still stayed for the year. They didn't go anywhere. They were, you know, we watched them all summer. They were still around. They were still using the perches directly where the nest was. They just didn't use the nest. Um, we did try opening up some of the other nests around Brennig that period as well. Again, they were, they were, they visited, but they didn't really, really take to it. And then, the work came over the winter to try and to, to improve things for next year. So open reach donated as a new pole, which was really nice of them. And they installed it for us. We built some new nests. We used some of the money from the, from, we'd been given through donations to improve the protection measures in a new boom around the nest in the lake was put in 150 meters away. So no one could get anywhere near it. New fencing was put in motion sensors were put in all around the perimeter. We improved the cameras. And so on the back of that, quite a lot of, Good work came out, and then we 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 and we also got involved with the Roy Dennis Foundation a bit more with Tim McCrill, and we wrote a new conservation plan as well. So it it, it really kind of kick started things things along, and also I think it, it made kind of Welsh Water realise exactly what they had um, and what they needed to do with an osprey site on their land. So again, we were giving them support, but ultimately it's it's Welsh Water's nest on their land, we went, and they were responsible for it, and and it did it kick started that off, and loads of kind of good things kind of happened on the back of that. Um, like I said, yeah, Tim McCrill came up, wrote our new conservation plan. Um, we also had some help from the RSPB as well in that in that process. And um, yeah, we, we now, we're now on a really good trajectory with, with the Brennig Nest. Um, and it's, you know, out of that adversity, there's been a lot of positives, which is, which is really good to see. Um, so in 2022, uh, we had three eggs and two actually hatched. So 2022 was the first year at Brennig where we actually had two chicks that fledged. So we had X6 Olwen and, and K9 Gallet. I think I've got some pictures. There they are. So they were on the Brennig nest. So they were the two chicks in 2022. Um, and after, you know, again, coincidence or is it due to what's happened up there? Again, first year, we, after we've put all these measures in place, we've changed the way we're doing things up there and we've got two chicks. So yeah, great. And then, um, on the 25th of May 2024, like I said before, uh, Gallup, another one of our chicks, so Gallup from that from 2022 actually came and visited the nest this year. So Gallup returned two years later and actually sat on the nest with his mum and dad. So that was this year and we got to see that, which was absolutely amazing. So knowing the chicks have fledged and then successfully coming back is, is kind of what we're what the whole project is about. And it's it's fantastic to see when Gallup came back. And we've also got Rolly back in glasses as there's two of the Brennings chicks messing around in Wales at the moment for mates, which is great. And then in 2023, we had two more chicks. So again, we had three, three, three eggs, um, two successfully fledged. And then we have, we have Dillis and Mary. And that is this, uh, this was 2023. So one thing you can notice the difference between those two pictures is the amount of trees around the area. So in 2022, on the back of this conservation plan with, with Tim McGrill, there was, there was, um, actions taken to remove a lot of the conifers around the osprey nest for well some of them for safety reasons because some of them would, would become mature and they were at the age where they needed to be felled otherwise they were going to fall down and we actually had a couple of trees actually fall down really close to the nest which almost um could have taken it out over the winter so we felled it the area but it was all done within this conservation plan written with tim mccrill so we we did all this work whilst water did all this work we was all done really sympathetically and, and now if you ever go to Brenny, you know, where once with that original picture where you could see with me with the telescope and the conifers, all those conifers are gone. The nest looks really, really exposed. But at the same time, the, the osprey seem to really, really like it. You know, they can sit on that nest now with 360 degree views. They seem very, very happy. We used to have issues with um, goshawks and, and hen harriers up there bugging them because they used to hide in the trees and, and, and be close by. But we get none of those issues anymore. So, you know, the birds seem to have really, really taken to it. And proofs in the pudding, you know, they've had two chicks each year, which have successfully fledged. So obviously you can see from, from those early years where one chick was hatching and, and not even getting chance to, to migrate, it's it's a massively more successful project. Obviously the aim is to get up to three or four chicks, maybe uh, three chicks, a lot of nests have, but, with, you know, with two chicks every year for a new pair who are still quite young, it was really, really 
really, really good news and really pleasing to see. Um, which kind of brings us on to this year. So again, it's never quite clean cut up at Brannick. So things again, things again changed again this year. So there's a, there's a kind of an overview of the year, but I'll run through it. So LJ2 came back on the 31st of March. So he's the male. And he's he's a, a real creature of habit. So in 2023, he came back on the 31st of March. In 20, <laughs> 2024, he came back on the 31st of March again, exactly to the day. So his partner, LM6, had come back roughly about the 4th of April every year. So in 2022, she came back around, I think it was the 3rd or something, or, and then the 4th. It was, she, was, she was always about four or five days after it. So we expected her back on the 4th of April. The 4th of April came and went, and there was still no sign of her. Uh, and we got to the middle of April, and, and she still hadn't come back. Now, in that time, there was another female who started visiting the Brennig nest, trying her luck, and she was called Blue 372. She was another Scottish-born Australian, again, translocated down to Pool Harbour in 2021 by the Roy Dennis Foundation. So again, gone through that kind of process of being moved and then finding her way back to Wales. And she first returned to Wales in 2023. Now, there's 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 four main kind of nests we talk about in Wales. So there's the Shimbrenig Osprey project, which we we are. There's the Glaslin nest, which we'll all know. There's the Dovey Osprey nest and the Cloedog Osprey project. So those kind of nests are always pushed forward because they're pretty well good protected sites. They've got monitoring on them. They've got people looking after them. They've got webcams. And what those kind of nests try and do is pave the way so that the other nests which are being built on private land and things like that can be left alone. So that's obviously, and obviously we need more nests as the osprey population improves, which it is doing, you know, about 25 years ago, there weren't any ospreys in Wales and they were only in Scotland. And now we're doing really, really well in Wales again. We have a lot more doing. So it, it, it it's working, but that's what we push ahead. So this bird, Blue 372, had been hanging around a nest um, not far south of Brenning, it was on private land near the, near, near the Alwyn Lake. And she was hanging around there from last year and she was there again this year. And she was also, there was a male hanging around with her as well. So those two had obviously come back again. They were hanging around this other private nest. Not quite successfully mated, not bred, not got together. Um, so obviously when... LJ2 had come back to Brennig and didn't have a mate. She started coming over and just paying him a visit and, and you know, trying to look a little bit. So the first few times LJ2 just shooed her off and said, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, I'm waiting for my part, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. But as time went on, you could see that he was starting to kind of, she was a bit wearing him down, you could say, but at the same time, he was warming to her as well. So it, 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 the dynamics started changing as, as the realisation came, well, actually, she's not going to come back. I'm on my own here. What am I going to do? And so she, he started letting her go, let her in and letting her in. So they started, they, they, she started coming over more. They stayed over longer. They started breeding. They were bonding. But it wasn't clean sailing because her, the male that she'd been hanging around with from the other nest kept coming back and trying to take her back. We had one evening where we watched it happen where the bird literally it almost pushed her back to, it, to the other nest. He literally was flying behind her, having a go at her, coercing her, pushing her back towards the other nest. And we watched it all, all evening happen and you could see it. And, but the next day she came back again. And it was about three or four more times where he came again to try and take her back. But eventually he gave up and they managed to, to breed. So on the 23rd of April, they laid their first egg, which was amazing. You know, we you know, we, were, we we thought we were getting to the stage where we might not have a breeding pair, but it happened. And it was probably a couple of weeks later than what we expected, but it happened. Then we had an, a second one on the 26th and on the 29th, third leg was laid. And then 2nd of June, we had a chick, and then the 4th of June, the other one. So the other ne egg just, just failed for whatever reason. Um, we think it may have failed because we actually ha also had another female osprey intruder who actually spent the whole night uh attacking the female on our nest it was it was it was it's, it's you can actually go back onto our facebook page and, and, and go back to it uh, back in april and um, we've got some footage on there but there was a, one evening where the the eggs were left alone for for almost six hours and it was quite a cold night 
um, because his other female was around and, and Blue 372 eventually kind of won in that kind of battle and shooed her off and literally took the battle away from the nest. But it didn't mean the nest, the, the eggs were left alone, um, not warm, which could have been one of the reasons why one of the eggs didn't hatch. But again, this is their first year mating as a couple. They've never been together before. You know, the fact that they managed to to get two chicks to to to, to hatch was absolutely brilliant anyway. So on July, July the 8th, they were, they were both ringed. So we had 8B9 and 8B8. So we had Beth and they were named Beth and, and Emery. So all the names for the chicks of Brennig have been picked by local schools, which is where they've come from. So that's who names them. So we have a, a couple of schools around Denby and Henshan area, and they picked the names for us. Um, but the volunteers last this year have been laughing about about the names because we've got a couple of Yorkshire volunteers up there and they go and they, and they call her 8B8. You know, like 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 she's a plank of wood and eight be nine like another plank of wood and that's what they call them and we've had some of the kids as well if any of you watch Star Wars call him blue eight be eight bb eight from from the Star Wars movie so it's been we've had a bit of a laugh about the names this year um, and then in July uh, they both fledged within a day of each other and then on the fourth of September and the sixth of September they both fledged successfully and were last seen at Brennig and they've gone off on their own migration. So we can kind of now in this kind of flux of, well, let's hope, let's we'll see what comes for next year and things like that. But again, it was, it's not clean, clean sailing up at Brennig. You know, we've had Blue 24 and HR7 and then we've had LJ2 and LM6. And now we've got LJ2 and Blue 372 in the space of six, seven years. It's, it's, it's not great, but, one thing that has improved is the fact that we are getting two chicks every year, which we didn't have. Um, and all those security measures with the nest are still in place. Um, and they, you know, we've had no further incidents up there. There's been no, no, no aggro kind of thing. And, you know, it's quite funny that all we ever want from an Osprey season at the start is a nice, quiet year. We want it to be a nice, quiet year. No, no aggro. That's all we kind of hope for. And just so we can enjoy the time monitoring the birds and seeing what they do. So, Yeah. So this is this is the chicks from this year. So, you know, this is a bit of a size difference because I, I just can never get my head around how quick they grow from being born at the start of June to to being able to migrate at the start of September. You know, it's 90 days and they and they go from the size of a, a duck egg to being two foot tall with a with a 1.5 meter wingspan. It's absolutely crazy. Um and it, it's yeah. It's just, it's just when you look at that comparison, because when you're when you're watching them every day, you don't notice it. But you know, it's like when you haven't seen your your kids or you or you know your 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 family's children for a while. That's when you notice the difference, isn't it? Like they've shot up, but with the ospreys, it's it's just madness how quick they grow. It's but it's again, it's fabulous to see and watch that journey. So, what do we kind of do up there? So. With with Brennig, so like I said before, and I've mentioned a few times, Welsh Water are kind of they own the site, and we've we've come in, and and we we do all the the, the monitoring for them. We do all the public engagement things for those for those guys, and we work closely with with Timber Creel and the Roy Dennis Foundation. So you know, if anyone ever wants to come up to get involved with, up at, at Brennig, we have our Osprey lookout. So that's an old picture now. We've actually we had some money from um, the Cluedog Cl Wind Farm recently and we've actually got a really big nice veranda out the front of that lookout now we've got all the scopes outside we've got um uh it's all in the cover so it's not as bad as it as that, as that picture was with the scopes and the grass um and i don't know if any of you know this as well and um, that if any of you visited the w osprey site and remember going back before they had their brand spanking new multi-million pound observatory they used to work out the port cabins that port cabin is the old visitor center at Dovey. That's our porter cabin. <laughs> it's their cabin. They gave it to us. So we do a lot of work with Emmett Evans at Montgomery Wildlife Trust. And they gave us that when they had their redevelopment. So it's kind of carrying on the legacy of, of what some of the work that Dovey Osprey did. But um, so, yeah, we do a lot of things out there. So we do a lot, loads of monitoring. So we've got loads of good data. If you actually go on to the North Wales Wildlife Trust website or onto our YouTube channel, there's, there's quite a lot of videos that Sarah Callon. So Sarah Callon is the lady who does the day-to-day -day stuff on there and she coordinates all the monitoring and the volunteers and, and keeps the Osprey hide open and keeps the visitor centre open for people to go. She kind of is in control of all that. But there's loads and loads of stuff on there. Um, and the webcams are actually still live. You know, the fishermen use the webcams now to um, check the weather before they go up to uh, 
to Brennick before they go fishing in the winter. So they were like, please keep the cameras on through the winter. We just check what the wind's doing before we come up. So it's it's great. But it, but there's loads of stuff and info on the website. Um, and we're, there's a lot more videos we've been putting up recently of some of the, the data we're getting. So we, we're, we're looking at where the Ospreys go to go their fishing. Because one thing about Shin Brennick, as much as it's, if anyone's been, it's, it basically it's a, it's a Welsh water reservoir, but it's a fishing lake. And they make a lot of money from allowing people to go and fish on the site. And it's stopped with um, rainbow trout. But the ospreys don't really like just eating rainbow trout. They're like us. They, you know, we need different parts to our diet. So they, they, they're, they're sometimes pulling out grayling and mullet. So they're fishing in the River Dee. They're fishing in the Conway Estuary. So a lot of the work we do up there is, is kind of working out where they're fishing, why they're fishing in certain areas and where they're going. Um, because inadvertently, um, there's a lot of, work on renewable energy at the moment isn't there so you know there's more there's pressure to put wind turbines up in different places and brennick's been earmarked that whole area around brennick's been earmarked for a lot more wind turbines going up because it's really high up and it's exposed and it gets a lot of wind it makes perfect sense but it needs to be done in a way that it doesn't impact what's going on up there ever so you know this year we're, we're kind of exploring some things like maybe putting some air tags on some of the ospreys to see exactly where they go and creating like you know lines from the nest of where the ospreys go and so yeah when we'll use that when we're talking about potential development out there actually that's where the ospreys go you might, you might want to move that here and stuff like that but that's all the kind of it, it, it involved with all the other work we're doing which is just building into osprey conservation across the uk and yeah it's it's on an upward trajectory at Brennig at the moment and, you know we're just hoping that our pair come back and next year we don't have any more mishaps um so yeah that's that's kind of the site you know, that's the view across the lake. It's you know, in the summer, it can be absolutely fabulous up there with the nest just further over. Uh, yeah, and just some of the volunteers. And um, that's the, the lookout inside the old um, Osprey lookout from Dovey being repurposed up at Brennig, which is which is quite nice. Um, and I think this video is going to play. Yeah, this is the. Brennig Osprey Hyde, if anyone ever wanted to go up and visit it, this is the hide you can see, just a little video of where it is and the viewpoint you can get to the nest. So as you can see, all the all the trees have come down. It looks a bit rough up there, but there have been lots of native species planted in the, in its stead, so this is all going to soften up. But you can get quite a good view of the Osprey nest down there. And they left all those trees up as well as perch points for the ospreys around. So they've got plenty of places to sit and eat their fish and make some room where the um when the chicks are getting bigger in that nest and things like that. So yeah, it's not a not a bad place to be. Um there we go. And also we do a lot of other work up at Brennig now. So um the volunteers obviously the, there's ospreys up around Brennig, but there's lots of other wildlife up there as well, which is great to see. And um a lot of the volunteers have started well have been putting trail cams out all year around around the site around Brennan to see what else we can see. So I just thought I'd put this little video in there because there's so many, so much. You just need sometimes you need to stop and, and scratch the surface because people just don't realise what they're in. So I'll let the video do the talking because it's it's lovely. Please play now. Here we go. Does not want to play. No, it's not going to play the YouTube video. No. Again, no, it's not playing. Sometimes there's this YouTube, doesn't it, when you try and put it in the presentation. So there's loads of other wildlife up. This video is actually up, again, it's what's called Wildlife Caught on Trail Cams around Kim Brennan. If you go to the YouTube site on North Wales Wildlife Trust and type in that, you will find it. it, it, it it's fabulous. We've had de loads of different... Uh, we've got deer up there, uh, loads of otters, foxes... My oh, just just there's, there's loads of stuff. Um, pine martins, so there's a lot you know, pine martins up there. We've got red squirrels up there, it's fabulous. But the, yeah, this video is just not playing ball, I'm afraid. Um, and again, we couldn't do this without the work of the volunteers up there. So it's it's been a lot of a lot of heartache, a lot of hard work, a lot of you know, it's it's been it's been quite a difficult project to kind of get into a good place where it is at the moment. But we couldn't do it. You know, Wells Water do an awful lot of work up there, and we couldn't. You know, they they 
they're kind of un, not unsung heroes, but they do stick a lot of financing behind it, which isn't often seen by by the public. And you know, they you know ultimately they do all the maintenance on the nest, they do all the maintenance on the ground, they do all the maintenance on the cameras and stuff like that. We kind of just do the other kind of bit of it. So whilst we're doing an awful lot of work up there, so a lot of credit's got to, got to be done up there. Um, but we also rely massively on on a lot of volunteers, and some of the people in the chat I can see are. Oh, some of the watch volunteers who have helped us this year, which is amazing. And we've got some people who have helped us on the ground as well. So we've got 30 on-site volunteers who have been helping us all year. And we've got actually got 60 watchers who, who watch the camera from home overnight for us and things like that, which all kind of feeds in and they 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 monitor his stuff, they give us data, they tell us about the fish, and it all helps towards the project. So it's 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 really good. But if anyone ever wants to go up there, you can you can again just, just pop on the website. Yeah, we, it, it's open all summer. You, know, you can go up and, and see for yourself. But if you ever want to do up, anything up there or get involved, as we'd always be, we'd, we'd love to have you up there. And Sarah, Sarah, who works for me, who's the, the the officer up there, is 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 fabulous. She's so infectious. She just she's absolutely brilliant. She's she's like a she's just she's like a cold spring. She's got so much energy, but she she loves getting involved with, with the work up there and she she's really really passionate about looking after the, after the ospreys and any other wildlife so if you if you're just interested in wildlife in general please pop up and have a look at it and you know some of the awesome some of the guys up there know more about the ins, ins and outs than i ever will you know even though I, I i've been involved for six years but some of the things they tell me and the stories they've seen today and what's going on is just absolutely fabulous it's just it's it's really 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 good um and that's kind of kind of it <laughs> like I said, a bit of a whistle stop tour. So if anyone's got any questions or anything, um please unmute yourself, give us give us a shout. Um you know, thank you for listening and thank you for putting up with me for, for almost 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, th thank you so much, Mark. That was a brilliant insight into just how much effort it is uh to um to encourage and to en to enable these really charismatic birds to survive uh, uh Anywhere, really, but uh, we're really pleased that, that, that uh, they're in Brennig. One thing that you mentioned was these tracking devices about um, uh, finding out how uh, their routes that they travel uh, are going to coincide with the uh, wind farms. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a Wildlife Trust research project no, or RSPB? It's, 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 no, it's, it's actually, it's RSPB already doing it. And a few so what they're actually doing is they've actually realized that there's an old signal that's not being used anymore which was actually used for analog tv which just exists it's an old kind of signal and the air and these kind of air tag things these trackers would get picked up by this signal so it's really easy to use it already exists it doesn't cost a lot of money so what we're thinking of maybe we um could we we can put these little in in not a, really inobtrusive tags on, on them when we're ringing them. Not like the satellite tags. We don't satellite tag these birds because the satellite tags have been massive in the past. We don't want to do that. But you can just put these on them and it will actually, when when they go past these little aerial sites in North Wales, it just gets picked up and you can just work out where they're going. So with the with the pressure for Brennig, there's, there's, there's almost the pressure to ring the whole of Brennig in wind turbines. The whole area has been earmarked potential for wind turbines, up, which would literally enclose the whole lake. And obviously we have that incident with one of the birds getting hit. So what we want to do is this year, especially if we can get these tags on them, see where they're going, at least create these channels where they're not going to build anything. So, because there has to have been some work done already, but, it, but it's never been done at Brennig. So they can't really do the, you know, they don't really know where these birds, they've only got a rough idea where they've been seen. So if we can get this data, it would, it would, might be really beneficial to the ospreys, but also where the birds are there as well. Oh, thank you. Any 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 more questions? Uh, we have a <coughs> question. Yes. Sorry, but how long does an osprey live in general terms? <laughs> they can live up to a, I think it's about twenty five years. I think they can live. Um, you know, they, they they live quite a significant amount of time. <laughs> so I think I'm not sure exactly how old some of the older ones are. But you know, twenty to twenty five years they can do. But obviously, they have an awful lot of. It's, you know, it, it, it's it's a difficult life being osprey. It's a long way to go to migrate. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of peril on that way. So you know, but they potentially could live twenty twenty five years, and hopefully it would be the same pair mating for that whole time as well. 
in the same nest every year. That's kind of what we're we're hoping could happen. And Susanna's asking, is there a link to follow LJ2 and Blue372? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can put I can put that in the chat now if you want. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if you stay on, stay on once I've done the questions, I'll put a couple of links on the chat for you. And Bardia says, thanks. That was terrific. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. And if anyone wants to know anything about the Osprey project or what's going on up there, please um, just go onto the North Wales Wildlife Trust website. I'll put the link in. And Sarah's contact details are on there. Um, she would love to chat you and she can send you all the links and anything else you want to know. But I'll put the, the link to the website in the chat now for you all. Um, just grabbing it now. I've got too many screens open. This is the problem. So yeah, it's in the chat for you all now. The webcams are still live on there. There's some info on there about the history. Um, and then um, it tells you how to become a member of some of the events on there. And um, it should be a link to the YouTube. I will put that in separately now for you. Okay. Is it, can everyone see that link in the chat? Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stick the North Wales Wildlife Trust YouTube channel in as well because there's loads of videos on there as well for you. Okay. There we go. And that video, which didn't work, is on there as well. <laughs> With all the wildlife cameras as well. So there you go. There's a couple of, couple of links in there for you. There's loads of video on our YouTube channel, probably too many. There's 220 odd people. But the first two videos you can see are there's a roundup of this year and then there's a wildlife trail cams from this year as well for Kim Brennick are all on there for you. Okay. Is that it? Is it anybody else? Well, thank you so much, Mark, and uh, look forward to seeing you at more events and look forward to seeing what happens to the Ospreys next year. <laughs>